What a load of bollocks! Hey, what's up, guys? On this episode of Drugs and Stuff, Dave and I are going to talk about what's happening in the news regarding steroids. Plus, uh, we've got some listener questions. We're going to talk to Dave about his his new phlebotomy business that he's doing and a bunch more. So stay tuned. We're going to do that right now. I have some more news. We've got steroids in the news. There's always a new story, man. There's always a new story. Victoria sent this one to me today. We uh, we, we need a little news backdrop and then some dramatic music to, you know, steroid news this week. Da, 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 da. Guys, we have breaking news on steroids. There so, we go. That's something it, like yeah. that. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, this article, Victoria sent this to me. Uh, this is uh, latest in a doping case here. Uh, headline reads, Canadian canoeist, she's a rower, uh, she wins a doping case citing bodily fluids from her boyfriend. So she tested pot. Now, let's see here. I, I, I got to break into this because I haven't, I haven't really uh, analyzed this myself yet. I want to see what this is all about. But What is right? Eve? So, Go on. Okay, so Sorry. here's a little more information. World champion canoeist won a doping case on Monday after persuading a tribunal that her positive test was caused by bodily fluid contamination from her boyfriend. 11 time world record champion uh, who tested positive for a steroid like substance in July. She faced a four year ban and could uh, have missed her Olympic debut in 2020 Tokyo Games. Um, let's see, the, the uh, Canadian canoe sprint racer and her lawyer decided in a new program that uh, laboratory analysis of hair and her boyfriend showed that he was likely responsible for a tiny percentage of, oh, this is, um, is this a SARM? It's called like uh, Ligandrol? Yes, it is. Okay. Presence of Ligandrol in her doping sample. Uh, so they're, they're saying that this was not her at all. Uh, it took months to get results. And then at the end, we got the idea to analyze the hair of her ex. Oh, and it's not only her, her, her significant other, it's her ex-boyfriend, um, to test, uh, for the product he finally admitted to taking. So the key evidence comes back to the laboratory ahead of the tribunal hearing in December. Um... Yeah, they, they say that the IFC has accepted uh, Mrs. Vincent's uh, uh, evidence, which supports that she was the victim of third-party contamination. Governing body said in the statement, uh, she's so she's allowed to she's cleared for competition. What a load of bollocks! Yeah, What's so an absolute crock of shit. I don't know, man, Dave. This is... No, I don't, I don't swallow that shit. No, no. <laughs> she, apparently no. she did. No, no. <laughs> well, yeah. That was good. Sorry. I'm laughing yeah, at my own jokes. Good, I'll give you that one. Turn, <laughs> out, turn on that one, mate. Uh, um, no, no. I'm sorry. I, I'm not getting that. You're telling me that a psalm that is a relatively low anabolic and taken at relatively low doses has yeah. significantly traveled across in bodily fluids in order for her to test positive. What was her original testing? What, what, wait, what do you mean? Did, was she tested urine or was she tested blood? It says it says hair. Where, where was this? No, he was tested hair, wasn't it? He okay. was tested hair. Yeah, uh, her lawyer decided that in a newer program, okay, hair from her then boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. So they've gone for hair for him because he gives a longer drug record right so blood and urine probably wouldn't show anymore it'll be out of his system whereas hair gives like a, a date and time stamp almost of you know does it period of when use was it it's a bit like a, a sediment rock you know you can read the layers oh okay historically okay. see so as long as the hair is the hair that was on the head at the time of the usage it will it will literally have the record of what you've taken at, during that period yeah um so the only ever case I've known of cross-contamination from steroids was a gentleman you, and I think I've said this on the show, was a gentleman using um, cream. 
Okay. Protesting. And he was smothering himself, and then he was getting amorous with his girlfriend, and the skin-to-skin -skin contact was causing the gel to absorb through her skin. Okay. I have never, ever heard of somebody shagging somebody and even testosterone doses being transferred, let alone that, which is dosed at ridiculously low doses anyway. I mean, we're talking, what, 30, 40, 50, 60 milligram max? Yeah. Uh, and it's nothing to do with the fact that SARMs are quite popular with female athletes because the anabolics are not androgens or anything like that at all, is it? No. Yeah, I'm looking at an older. So this is this is newer information. I'm looking at an older. So, so this is not the. This is not what they've said the whole time. So this is like before this, she had claimed that she was using a tainted supplement, and that led to the positive test. So, but she can provide evidence, and then she's come up with this cock and bull story about her boyfriend taking it, and it cross examination to her. Dude. <laughs> This is amazing. This is like freaking amazing that she got away with this, isn't it? Like, this is pretty obvious, right? To me, yeah. I, 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 you know, just because there is the finite possibility that something may happen yeah, doesn't mean, I mean, there is the possibility that there are little green men in a spaceship sat above my house now currently watching me that may float down and grab me and anally probe me with something very large and pointy. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's a believable scenario. Yes, you, you could, you know, I can't prove 110% that that could not possibly happen. Yeah. But common sense would tell you that, you know, the likelihood of that is, is incredibly slim. Hmm. For a start, why would an alien want to probe such a wonderful-looking human being as myself? It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but, uh, nah, just, that's, that's got to be a crock of shit, surely. Some, some, some fucker's got to be getting paid to believe that crap. It says here um, that she could have made contact with the banned substance through sharing a utensil, a cup, or a water bottle. Of somebody who had fuck ingested ligandrol. Fuck off. That's what there's. It's written here, dude. Fuck it's literally. Off. That's it's what not the article says. Fucking cyanide. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. Yeah, we have to look at every scenario. It doesn't just oh, appear in no. the body, uh, so we have to find out on. where it came from. The, 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 the dosing requirement to get a positive be over the threshold. Mm. Uh, and everything else is not going to come because you've licked the same spoon your fucking boyfriend has. <laughs> right, right. Or you've sucked his knob. Piss off. Yeah. Ain't happening. Yeah. Uh, so that that's interesting, man. I, I, I have find we got it... a picture of this woman? This this could be more interesting as well. Have we any visuals of this, this lady? We do. Um, I'll have to pull that up. I don't know if I have it right offhand here. I'm sure I can pull something together for the final... The, the final recorded version of this. I do have one shot here that I can uh, I can put up of her rowing. I mean, she she looks like she's in pretty good shape, and I do imagine that rowing would. Uh, oh yeah, you expect any athlete in an endurance to be in good neck. Yeah, here's a here's more of a close up. She was in the uh, the article. So yeah, there's that. I I have another story though too that I thought might be. This, I, I kind of wanted to turn to you for a little insight, because this is, I believe, from the Daily Mail, which is the newspaper we spoke about recently, who they, mm -hmm. they talked to you, right? Uh, no, I thought it was the Guardian that talked to me. I can't remember. It might have been the Telegraph. No, it's the Telegraph. Telegraph. The Telegraph, yeah. Yes. Okay, no, this is the Daily Mail then. Um, are you familiar with a TV show called Love Island? I have never watched it. I will never watch it. But you, so, but you know what it is. You've heard of this. And I, I believe there is a program that exists where large numbers of idiots effectively cheat on each other, I think. Yeah, yes, yes. I am aware of this trailer trash TV bollocks that is apparently quite interesting to a lot of people. Did you guys notice how Dave didn't even want to admit that he knew what it was at first? Like he didn't even want to admit that he knew what the show was. I have I have never seen an episode. I, I swear on my my snorty 
Farty Dog's Life. I have never seen an episode of that shite. So you've probably seen like commercials, I assume, or something. Have, have you ever uh-huh. seen what the guys look like? Like the physiques of the guys that are on this show? Well, yeah. I mean, it's your typical sort of short beach body. Could be natty if they actually gave some effort, but most likely using a bit of Danavar and sort of type and trend boy sort of physique. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's what I'm getting at here. Um, mm. I just put a picture up on the screen for everybody to see uh, an example of what these guys look like. So um, the Daily Mail over at DailyMail.com. This is a UK newspaper. They have a story here saying uh, men are abusing steroids to get the Love Island look as anti-doping experts warn young users wanting six packs um, are a ticking time bomb for the NHS. Right. There's been a few of these type of reality shows. Um, uh, there was one, Love Island is one, um, and there's a couple of others. Okay. Um, X on the Beach, I think, was one was called or whatever, where there has been contestants that have been accused of steroid use. Okay. I was unfortunate enough to actually have to look at after one of these individuals at a PR event. You were kidding me. No, I was doing a bit of bodyguarding. Um, You're a bodyguard? No, I haven't done it for, for a long time, but I've done bits and bats over the years. Did um, you Did you have, like, a suit on? And were you wearing, like, dark glasses with an earpiece? No. I'm just trying to get a perspective. I wouldn't want to mess with anybody that you were protecting, Dave. Um, I don't care what you were wearing. Um, but I was t-shirt. picturing the suit. Yeah, no, it, I was um, T-shirt and jeans, actually. But um, it was just a, a PR you know, turn up at nightclub type bollocks. Yeah. Um, my, a friend of mine, a good, very good friend of mine, is a security company. He rang me up, said, "Can you do us a favour? Can you look after this and no bodies here, sort of thing?" And I was like, "Yeah, not a problem." And to be fair, actually, the lad wasn't too bad when he was on his own. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember his name, but he admitted he was on Anavar. He was asking me loads of questions about what to use, how to use it, and all this shit. And he admitted that a large number of the lads that were doing the shows were on gear. Um, so it, it's a very, very common trait, uh, and there's a few studies and, and social commentators that have pointed fingers at these shows saying they are encouraging steroid use because of the physiques. And, and huh. they're not what me and you would look at and say, well, yeah, that's a a steroid-induced physique. Right. They're what me and you would look at. So, well, yeah, he obviously does a bit of the gym, probably yeah. you know, in, into his fitness more than he is his weight sort of physiques. Right. And that's uh, what I see in this picture here, too. Yeah, these guys yeah. do not look... I'd never call these guys jacked, you know? But they are what I suppose is everything that's wrong with steroid usage these days, mm. in that it's used unnecessarily to achieve subpar physiques that could easily be done with a bit of effort Yeah, because of a lack of education and knowledge or, or downright laziness, I suppose. I mean, at the end of the day... You know, can you stand in judgment of somebody using a drug? It's their choice, I suppose, and theirs to do what they wish, will want to with. It's definitely not necessary for what they're creating. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's not necessary for me to drive to the shop. I could walk there if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I've got a car. I'm going to fucking drive. So I understand the argument well. Okay. Yeah, I could watch my diet, and I could train hard, but I could also just take training. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and it's very typical of that sort of attitude. The issue off the back of that is that actually when you look at the risk levels of various user groups, and this is very deeply entrenched in the social media sort of cosmetic user groups of steroids. Sure. They are the ones that are at the greatest risk. Now, why? Why is Because I agree, but explain why. I'm... Because generally they have the worst drug knowledge and it's usually yeah. very peer led. So, you know, they're taking what the mate told them to take. Yeah. Or the mate did it and he looked good. Yeah. Um, their physiques usually reflect a lack of or a very basic level understanding of training and nutrition, which is why they're using the drugs to achieve the goals because they can't achieve the goals through the work and the nutrition that they're eating. Yeah. And also there's that party element as well where we see alcohol and we see recreational drugs mixed in as well so 
these are, you know, this is a user group and very much, and I don't want to stereotype anyone on these shows. I don't know the people. I don't know what they fucking look like. I have no fucking interest in knowing whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and if you want your five minutes of fame, fine. I have your five minutes of fame. It's no skill off my nose. But they do typify what a lot of guys do in, in, in the sense of, you know, they'll use gear because they want to look good, because they want to pull birds, because they want to look decent on a beach. And they're then going to Ibiza and doing two weeks of every fucking thing on the planet and yeah. go be some alcohol and wonder why they come back. But they are very well. Yeah. Um, after so, after running Trend yeah. in Halo, um, you know, in Winstrel. Well, well, the other thing is they tend to run their estrogen incredibly low because they don't want any water retention mm. adding to their health issues, driving cholesterol to be more adulterated than it should be. They tend to like their orals, particularly Winstrel and Anavar yeah. uh, and everything else. Uh, um, and so, you know, the paper is right in the sense that this group of users is the most likely to fuck themselves up. That's interesting to me. I mean, I, I, I agree. But I, I, it's, it's interesting more, to more me. More so probably than your big heavy roid monsters that are doing your three, four, and five gear, gram gear courses. Because yeah. they know what they're doing is bad for them. They know what they're doing <laughs> is dangerous. And as a result, there is an element of checking. Yeah. You know, whereas these lads will probably stay maybe a gram, gram and a half, but they won't know what PCT is. They won't understand about a shutdown. They won't understand about the dangers of mixing drugs and alcohol with steroid use. Or things uh, like blood pressure, hematocrit, yeah. you know, all, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so, and generally what happens is, and, and again, I'm, I'm speaking very stereotypical here, but is we get high hematocrit, we start getting a thickness and a stiffening of the, the myocardium, so the heart wall starts to become less flexible. Then they go out and party, mm. not huge amounts of tequila, do four lines of coke, and wonder why they're having a heart attack because the heart just can't keep up because it can't move as fast as it used to because it's thickened yeah. and they're now whacking cocaine, the whacking stimulant in that's, you know, giving the heart bilio and it just falls over itself. Yeah. Uh, and that is a very, very, very typical mama brought juice. Oh, good. But hi, I, Mrs. Uh, Crossland. Uh, says hi, mama. Hi. <laughs> um... And, and that is very, very typical of that, that sort of style of user. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the, there are lads that are sensible and there are, you know, there are users in other groups that are just as reckless, but proportionally that is the, the probably the biggest area of concern when it comes to harm reduction in types of users. Hmm. Wow. And so you, you actually were guarding one of these guys at one point. You haven't mentioned his name, so I can ask you, did you did you talk to him at all about gear? Did he look were you bigger at the time and did he look at you and be like, Hey man, what should I run? I haven't got a fucking clue what he was called. Um I have no idea who he was. I don't <laughs> even know which of these type of TVs he came off. It might have been Geordie Shaw, it might have been Towie or whatever they call it, it might have been fucking Shagging on the Beach or Lob Island. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it was probably the third sentence out of his mouth. Oh, really? So he did ask you, like, what do you, what do you take? Mate, it, honestly, um, yeah, it was, all right, all right, yeah, all right, mate, yeah, you don't know, yeah. So what gear do you recommend? <laughs> <laughs> you obviously know, um, looking at you. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's happened a few times, um, I remember coming back when we were filming UC2 yeah. uh, and um, I was having all the problems with the trapped nerves and I needed a wheelchair coming off the plane so obviously you get a porter to take you in your wheelchair yeah and oh, it's really I'd feel bad for the guy that had to push your wheelchair Dave that would be that would be heavy when you were in UC2 400 pound yeah. wheelchair that's a lot yeah he wasn't the biggest of guys either he was <laughs> literally oh god he must have been 130 wet through you know what I mean <laughs> Oh, eleven stone or something, um, and he starts pushing me through, and he's not said anything to me, and he just turned around and went, "So, what do you think about Tread?" <laughs> the first words out of his mouth, and I was just like, "Oh, for God's sake!" What did you James say? Was with, James was with me, and he was absolutely fucking howling. Yeah, he couldn't stop laughing at it. Um, I can't remember what I said now. Probably ranted about the evils of training and what the fuck is he doing using it and go and eat some food, you skinny runt. But yeah, um, but yeah, I do remember because I actually said to him off the back of that a lot of the lads on the show using. It. He said, "Yeah, most of them are on VAR." Wow. 
Okay. They've got to be a little bit careful when they're on the show, and obviously they can't carry injections, so most of them are running VAR while okay. they're away. Huh. There was a we. I don't know if you've seen it. We have. Um, I don't even know if you have an American version of it. Get, uh, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Nah, but I don't watch TV, so we may have it. It's very possible. Oh yeah, you don't watch anything, do you? Strange individual. I watched um, Under Construction one and two. I told you that, Dave. That's the only movies I watch. I have them on repeat, just playing constantly. Mm. Um, <laughs> that look. It was uh, uh, there was some uh, one of these characters, one of these type of people off one of these sort of um, of reality shows. Yeah, had gone on that, and he had left after a few days. He had Anavar with him. And, and apparently he made himself aware to the production crew that he was struggling because he was addicted to steroids and and, and all the... Oh, I was honest, it was a proper load of bollocks. Uh, and, and then he supposedly went into rehab and, and then was sitting on the morning TV shows trying to rekindle his career, talking about how he was going around and educating people on the, 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 the evils of steroid juice. He was an absolute, complete fucking dough ball. Wow. What was even worse was he didn't even look like he'd seen the inside of a gym. I mean, he hardly had a fucking physique in the first place. Yeah. But he was just, he, he had a meltdown because he, he couldn't train and he couldn't eat his diet and all this sort of crap. Well, his diet can't have been working very well looking at, you know, it's that would be like me saying, fuck me, I've had a burger and it's going to ruin my physique. Jesus Christ, my physique's been ruined for the last five fucking years. <laughs> All right, man. Well, listen, uh, let's take a quick break. We've got a couple of questions. We can make topics out of those. Guys, we'll be back in just a minute. Hey, guys. Why are you using sports nutrition that was designed for someone else? At truenutrition.com, they offer the world's largest selection of quality protein powders, and they let you design your own custom blend from a variety of powders, flavors, boosts, and packaging options, like the Team Skip blend, for instance. That's over 20 billion possible combinations to create a protein powder tailored to your diet, your goals, your tastes, and your budget. TrueNutrition.com also offers the ability to create delicious custom oatmeal blends. And they're third-party tested, proving that all their supplements are ensured to have the highest level of quality and value. Don't be a sucker and pay for fancy packaging and gimmicks. Discover the source that bodybuilders trust and stop using mass-produced nutrition that wasn't designed for you. TrueNutrition.com and use our code ADVICES at checkout to let them know that you support the shows. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Drugs and Stuff podcast with Dave Crossland. I'm Scott McNally. If you're just tuning in, uh, do us a favor, hit the like button if you enjoy the content. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do click the notification bell. You can stay up to date. We've got several programs coming out each week. Dave, we've got a couple questions uh, lined up here for the show. And I am heading over to the Advices Radio Facebook group. Guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, Advices Radio is uh, our, our audio affiliate. You can search Advices Radio at podcast apps or go to advicesradio.com and listen to all of our stuff there. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to take you back to the previous episode. Omar Hurtada loved that when we talked about the uh, that uh, the, the new uh, the new virus over in China uh, that you put together a whole conspiracy theory uh, related to uh, that uh, that movie uh, Resident Evil. And, you, and you've still not watched it, have you? I have not watched Resident Evil. No. And you've not even gone on YouTube and looked at a clip, have you? You want me to be honest? Yes. No, I didn't. No. <laughs> um, Lack of dedication to the program there, Scott. I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> so we've got a couple questions here, and, and one of them is going to be related to uh, to something we've been talking about a lot lately, to therapeutic phlebotomy. So uh, Dante Trudell had mentioned that blood donations in an attempt to keep CBC in range can uh, exasperate the issue in long term due to body compensating uh, the regular loss of blood. I've searched for literature on this, but have not found anything. Do you believe there's any validity to this? So the idea yes. being, okay, so that if you give blood regularly enough, your body will recognize that and it will build your numbers back up faster. However, the data um, is based around 
non-steroid users. Okay. So if you take someone who isn't, who hasn't got, uh, and and very often steroid users are, are actually diagnosed with the medical condition, which for some reason has just gone completely out of my head. Um, and I'm sure some clever twat's now going to type it at the bottom of the screen and say he's called this dead. Um, well, if you do, please, please do, and we can make fun. <coughs> of, we can make fun of Dave for not knowing yeah, together yeah, as a team. I'm old. I forget shit. Um, <laughs> um, but basically, I've seen I've seen several several sets of blood work where it's been diagnosed as the condition because they're seeing elevated RBC and hematocrit and everything else. Uh, and it's obviously it's not it's chemically induced which is a completely different scenario now when it's chemically induced you remove the induction from the chemicals and obviously the levels stop rising if you don't have high rbc and you um, you let too extensively then your body will start to show the symptoms of low rbc and so it will go into overdrive oh to create more blood cells Okay. If you don't, if you maintain letting, you will continually give the body a signal that it needs to produce more and it will continue to produce more. Yeah. If you stop, you will go through a period of elevated RBC until things start to self regulate and settle back down again. Okay. So it, it's sort of the opposite of steroids increasing production with you with withdrawing, your body senses a, 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 an, an, an underproduction and starts to produce more. Yeah. But generally, if you have a high elevated level, you are okay to donate. I'm sorry, I just have to hang up on Scott. Scott Stevenson? Yeah. You answer and put it on speaker. Tell him he's on the show. Oh, hang on then. Um, I'll have to ring him back. I'll just, I'll just ding him. <laughs> um... But so, yeah, you know, it, it, there is some fidelity in it, without a doubt, but it is based more around people that don't use and have been letting. But letting's been around since the Egyptian times. Yeah. You know, and um, there's a whole host of. Hello, oh. sir. We got. Oh, yeah. tell, tell him he's on the show. He just cold call you there, but I, I it seemed like my messages were going through, so. You are on um, drugs and stuff, my friend. We are just recording. Uh, again? Yeah, again. Doing that again? <laughs> so, right, this, this time at least I'm not driving. Can I can I give you a bell back in about twenty minutes or so? Yeah, of course. Thank you very much, Scott. Speak to you soon. All right, talk to you. He's such a cool dude. I gotta tell you, yeah, I, I, I know we're off topic here. I have learned so much from Scott. Like he's changed. My training so dramatic, like it, it, just listening to him, being around him, and being influenced. My training has been changed so much in the last couple of years, thanks to him. The thing is, he's just a cool dude. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, when I grow up, I want to be Scott. <laughs> All right. So you're saying though that um, you're saying though that so you know that if you're if you're out of range, that you're you're safe to donate. I got another kind of topic to bring in here, and this is something. There's a there's an expert who believes that this is okay. That hey, I, I want to get him on the show. I just sent him a message this morning. There is a belief that that slightly higher hematocrit, and I think we did talk about this a little bit before, is okay. That that you know if if you're in elevation, your hematocrit's going to be higher because of the elevation, and so that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely healthy. If you're on TRT and the TRT is causing you to be a few points out of range, that that's absolutely fine. That the reason that that uh, high hematocrit is an issue is the cause. So if you have a health condition that's causing your hematocrit to be high, that's where the concern is. Or if you were a steroid user that was on you know a, a bunch of gear. You know, you're running EQ and, you know, a bunch of tests and your your levels get really high and you're like at a 60 when you're supposed to be like under 48 or something, then, then yeah, that's that's going to be dangerous. But, you know, if you're a couple points out of range because of your TRT, that that's not going to be a health issue. What do you think about the people that are saying that, Dave? I disagree. Yeah. Well, I get, I get what they're saying. Yeah. I personally feel that... Um, 
I would not have an issue with seeing levels elevated within range. Okay. And a lot of this really comes down to what you baseline. So if you baseline middle of range yeah. and you're going up above range, that's quite a large increase. Sure. Where if you naturally sit relatively high and you're only going up a few points, well, that's quite a mild increase. So, so part of the impact on the body is how far removed you are from what is your homeostasis, what is normal for you. But it's very much in a way like estrogen in that it's not about crashing estrogen. It's yeah. about managing it. Uh, and elevated estrogen can have a lot of benefits as long as you keep it under that area where it starts to trigger negative side effects. So, you know, estrogen is supportive of healthy cholesterol. It, it's supportive of, of joint health. It's supportive of uh, of growth, you know. Yeah. You, you slam estrogen, you're not going to grow. It plays an important role in, in, in erectile function and libido. Um, and it's a bit like the same with hematocrit uh, and RBC and everything else that if you run it a little bit higher, there's going to be a positive knock on. You're going to get greater nutritional transit. You're going to get greater oxygen transit throughout the body. Yeah. But if you let it go too far, then it starts to have actually a negative impact because your blood gets that thick. It's moving like sludge. That, now that's where I could see it being a problem. Sure. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I, it, it's not that it, actually looks like sludgy i mean though i have seen blood drawn that is getting close to that yeah um yeah uh when you start going over 200 you start to see um that's rbc by the way um you start to see a very thick blood and you start to see a, a change in blood color as well um, okay. and it goes away from a, a healthy red to a, a more darker sort of dirty red okay um but there's two issues here. Um, of the elements that steroid use affects bodybuilder, one issue is obviously increased blood value. So we get thicker blood. Um, that in turn can increase blood pressure and that in turn can, can increase pressure on the heart wall. The heart has to work harder. It can't pump as freely. So you start to get a shortening in the heart range of pump. Uh, mm. what would commonly refer to as heart failure. It can also start causing arrhythmias and stuff like that as well. The other big area of concern when using steroids is cholesterol management mm. because cholesterols increase LDL and HDL in most cases, particularly orals uh, and particularly AIs. So if you're starting to get low HDL and elevated LDL, then you haven't got the road sweepers running around your arteries cleaning the shit off the walls. Mm. So as your arteries start to narrow a little bit and start to stiffen from the increased pressure, yeah. they become less flexible, they become narrower, and now you're trying to push a heavier liquid through a, a smaller hole. Yeah. So it's not always just the individual components, it's how the individual's components stack up with each other in the broad picture of what's going on inside your body. Yeah. So... I, I agree that a, a, a mild elevation um, can be very positive, particularly in realms of performance and in realms of, of um, um, growth and nutritional transit. But what I don't agree with is that you should be deliberately allowing it to stay out of range. I think it should still be kept in range, but it should be kept lower end. Now, when a lot of people argue this, they argue the cyclist argument that cyclists, because of the nature of their sport, whether they're drug users or not, and sort of altitude training, they have higher RBC count and their levels are out of range as well. Yes, but you have an athlete that's capable of riding for 100 miles at a very high pace on a fucking push bike. Yeah. You show me a 260 pound bodybuilder that's capable of doing that that's running high RBC you know what I mean right, <laughs> right, they, right. They, the cardiovascular conditioning is so much further advanced than the bodybuilders would be yeah so as a result their their fitness levels is so much greater that they offset the problem of running the higher RBC to some degree mm. um, whereas <laughs> bodybuilders and strong men and powerlifters and I'm not saying there aren't fit ones out there because they are but they don't have that same level of cardiovascular counterbalance. That makes sense. Um, I'll move on here. Sometimes I do make sense, you know. 
Just now and again. Once in a while, like like twice a show. And what I usually do, you don't know this, Dave, because you don't watch the show. I just pull out those two clips where you make some sense, and that's it. I just throw the rest away. So like the show is actually episode, only fifteen minutes long. That's exactly, what you're telling me. More like seven, but yeah, pretty <laughs> much like that. Um, <laughs> The thing is, what people are using, I genuinely don't watch the show, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, <laughs> uh, so Scott could actually do what the fucking hell he wanted with this, and I wouldn't have a clue what he was pointing out. I edit it um, to do all sorts of weird stuff, so like it makes you say weird things. I put different sentences together. It's I have a lot of fun with it. No, um, Alex Smith, he has a question here. Is it typical to experience body fat loss on Nandrolone? For example... I was using uh, a TRT dose of 200 milligrams of test and 100 milligrams of DECA. Lost nearly 20 pounds of what looks to be uh, exclusively fat um, in three months. And I also noticed a lower appetite than usual. Hunger is typically an issue for me, but it was much less a problem. Hmm. Well, he just answered his own question. What's that? He had a lower appetite. So as a result, he ate less. So as a result, he lost fat. Yeah. So that would be an obvious answer. Steroids themselves? That's the most likely answer. The, the direct action in fat burning from something like Nandrolone highly, well, no, not, not in any real world tangible noticeable way. However, if for argument's sake, and, and we, we'll... Um, you take someone who's 220 pounds who has um, a lean body mass of 170 pounds. Yeah. So he's got 50 pounds of fat on his frame. And you give him steroids, and his training's relatively effective, but his calorie intake is, is set at maintenance. Now, he's at calorie maintenance for his total body mass but he's actually in calorie excess for his muscle mass. Hmm. So he can start to gain a little bit of muscle. Because he gains more muscle, he needs more calories to support. Because he needs more calories to support, you'll find that uh, he actually starts to go into deficit and he can start to lose body fat. That would make sense. So uh, there's that scenario. There is a scenario that the gear is stressing the liver, which in turn is, is causing bile duct issues, which in turn is then affecting the stomach and digestion and appetite. Hmm. So they just aren't eating the same amount. And hmm. the fact that he doesn't mention diet in any of this at all would suggest that his diet isn't particularly trapped. Yeah. Uh, because if somebody was very conscious with their diet, that I would expect him to say, you know, I've kept the calories the same. Yeah. So I would suspect that there's a couple of possible processes going on here. One is increased muscle mass, burning more calories, putting him into a negative. Two is he just isn't eating as much because he's just not hungry. Yeah. And he's put himself into deficit. That would make but sense. At the end of the day, if he's lost 20 pounds of fat in three months, that's decent going, is that? Absolutely. No kidding. I, I, there, there's an element, too, that – you know, steroids are going to help you partition more nutrients for muscle storage, but that's not going to account for 20 pounds of fat loss, right? No, I mean, and you know, there are, when you look at the finites of it, yes, there are, there are some, I mean, like Trend does have a fat loss action. Yeah. Uh, Nevada's have a fat loss action. But in the grand scheme of things, not to the point where you can, you could look at them as being fat burners. Yeah. You know, I mean, they are primary anabolic and androgenic agents, and their primary goal is tissue build. So, you know, a couple of pounds here and there, yeah, I'll give you that. 20 pounds, nah, no, no, no. There's, you just simply, is, you're not eating as much. Uh, and that would probably be the most. And you tend to find that the fatter somebody is, it's probably not very PC to say that, um, fuck it, the more of a fat bastard you are, um, <laughs> What you'll probably find is that the ability to recomp, i.e. gain muscle and lose fat at the same time, is much, much greater. Absolutely, yeah, because it's so much easier to lose fat if you're versus if you're 8% and your your chance of growing muscle while you're losing fat is going to be a lot less. But also the difference between total body mass calories and lean body mass calories is much larger. Explain that. What do you mean? Well, if you need, like we said earlier, if, if you're carrying... 150 pounds of fat for argument's sake yeah 
which is no great exaggeration, but just bear with me, and you need 8,000 calories to maintain your body fat, your lean mass is only going to be about 3,000 calories, 3,500 calories. Yeah. So there's a much broader range there of, of difference between the two numbers. So you can still eat five or 6,000 above what is your lean body mass and still drop a shit ton of fat. Yeah. Okay. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So, you know, the bigger the gap is between those two numbers, i.e. the higher grade muscle mass, the easier it is to recomp because the difference between the two numbers is so much greater. All right. We got, uh, we got one more here. Um, this is from Ethan. He says, um, what is it in the body that happens during training that turns my pee yellow? For example, I drink a gallon to a gallon and a quarter of water a day, so my pee is always clear. But after I hit a couple of hard sets in the gym and I use the bathroom, it's yellow. Can you elaborate on this? Wizards. Wait, what? Wizards. Wizards? It's wizards. It's magic. It's magic. wizards. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. muscle. It's, I mean, what, we got a couple factors here, right? I mean, you're breaking down waste muscle, product. right? Yeah, it's waste product. Your, your shit in your piss is your garbage disposal system. It's how we get rid of our waste products. Yeah. One of the byproducts of training is waste product from consumption of energy, yeah. waste product from damage from muscle fibers, release toxins that have been stored in muscles as well. As the muscle stretches and contracts, it will pump toxins out. It's, it's waste. That's why your, your piss changes, because you have a higher concentration of waste coming out straight away. Yeah. And possibly a little bit of dehydration, too. You know, I mean, yeah, to couple well, that with it, possibly. Yeah, I mean, there's possibly, and, and, and possibly as well, if, if you're taking things like a pre-workout or an mm. intra-drink, and it's quite heavily laden with vitamins or minerals and stuff like that, that will change. I mean, um, you know, you take certain... There's always been certain vitamin concoctions over the year that would either turn your piss bright orange or bright green or bright yellow or something of that nature. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So there's all those elements to it as well, without a doubt. Yeah. But I, I, I think in general, you know, the, as long as your labs look okay, you know, this isn't something that you really need to be too concerned with. I mean, if it started if, getting really dark, like if it was brown, I would see that as a concern, you know? If, if you're seeing any trace of blood, Mm. Uh, any time in your urine, obviously that's a concern. But if your piss gets dark for a short period of time during the day, first thing in the morning post workout, I wouldn't be overly concerned about that as long as it's generally kept. Uh, and, and it's not just about water; it's about electrolytes and salts as well. Mm. And uh, you know, I've, you can wash out where you're drinking shitloads of water, but you're not actually driving it through the cell. Sure, so sure. You don't actually hydrate yourself. Excuse me, I've got an extremely itchy nose. Um, <laughs> this is the part I'll edit in. This is like the only part of the show. Yeah, here's Dave picking his nose for 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Just put it on repeat. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, but, yeah, so, you know, drinking water isn't always the solution. Sometimes you need to look at electrolytes and, and salts as well. Yeah. Um, I think for someone who's training hard, particularly if you live in a country where it's viable for hot climate. So um, you you would really be looking at some form of electrolyte supplementation, at least in one of your fluid intakes a day, if not probably a couple. That would make sense. I'm going to look through our uh, our list here. That's uh, all the questions we have, but I want to check and see uh, if we have anything else from our previous thread. I think that about wraps us up. You still have a few hours work, worth of uh, work, you said, huh, Dave? Yeah, not not uh, it was a drug cycle, uh, blood report to do, another blood report to do in a consult, a diet to do, two new clients to talk to, potentially new clients, a diet amendment, and a training plan. Hmm. Somebody suggested we dedicated a small segment to specific drugs, continuing along the same theme that Dave Crossland did in his drug series. Did you have a drug series that you put out on YouTube? Yeah, I did. I just I went through um, each drug yeah. every week. So be one week would be Anavar, one week would be, and then Dave Palumbo was going to do it with me as well, but mm. that sort of fell for various reasons. Mm. Um, <clears throat> if we were to do a segment like that next episode, what uh, what would be a drug that you think would be an interesting one to talk about? Um. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Most of them aren't fucking interesting, to right. be fair. Right, right. Um, so, 
you know, I mean, when I did it myself, I mean, we started off with, you know, D-Ball, T-Ball, Anavar, Oxys, and and just went through them all, just so that there was a reference for anybody starting if they wanted. It was a bit like um, my version of Anabolic. In the fact that you know anabolics lists all the drugs and basically a bit of history about them and that sort of thing. So yeah, it yeah. was that sort of thing, just in simpler terms that people could probably relate to a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be particularly interesting listening. If we did it, we'd probably need to keep it quite short. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe we just keep it to the, once in a while when we find something interesting. Like when we talked about MHN, that was something that mm. we, we don't really hear people talk about a lot. So. You know, yeah, unless you want to talk about a couple of the exotics like PGF two A. Ooh, you know what? I would love to hear your thoughts on that one. We just talked about that on uh, Blood, Sweat, and Gear this previous episode, which it's it's such a. And I remember asking you after that. You've you've had you've had some experience. Have you used PGF two A? Yeah, I have. And I can't remember if I asked you or not. Did you shit your pants? No, in fact, what most people won't tell you, if you learn to control the urge to shit your pants, you end up constipating yourself. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be damned. So it is possible to control the urge to shit yourself. It's not the easiest thing, but it is quite possible to do it. Uh, but then the problem is you start struggling to actually go because you've done that. Wow. Um more concerning is the aspiration through the lungs that first Ooh. time that happens you if you've ever got trend directly in your blood vein yeah you know what aspiration through the lungs feels like not fun yeah uh, times it by about 10 jeez wow you really do think you're about to die wow wow uh, the the brain inflammation is not the best thing either that's that's quite irritating okay so w- when i started talking about this with victoria this is something that she was not familiar with bodybuilders using. She's familiar with what PGF2A is. She's familiar with pl- prostaglandins. Her f- initial thought was all the side effects that that women experience due to these prostaglandins. And the fact that, I mean, this is basically, it is to create inflammation, which is in a lot of ways our enemy. So how is it even beneficial for, for us to use it? Why would somebody even begin to think that they'd want to take it for bodybuilding? It, it has a very, very unique action on fat cells. Um, it's about the only thing out there that actually destroys fat cells. More than, more effective than DNP? Uh, yeah, it just wipes fat cells out. Wow. The, the problem is, is you can't dose it as an injection, so you can't do it systematic wide. Okay. Uh, because you just can't cope with it. So what you have, what you generally do is you mix it in an aqueous cream and put it on topically. Oh, so so it's a local fat loss you, effect. You can you can use it like that. Yes. Okay. Wow. Um, as it it it's claimed to be a growth factor. So it's claimed that if you do PGFA, MGF, um, you can stimulate site growth. Okay. I never got to the point where I I found that the local was, um, you know, I mean, it really did. Whoa, you think Essequin's good? Fuck me, that shit was amazing with PGFA. But um, it uh, it was painful. Mm. Um, But I I can't say in any way, shape, or form that I could attribute any localized growth to it. Okay. But that is a lot of what people think, um, and the science would support that it, it has a, a, a localized growth action, definitely. No kidding. Huh. But I, ne- I never used it long enough, because by about 10 days, you just felt like shit. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it causing inflammation in the brain, very similar to like flu, influenza, that type of stuff. Uh, and, and generally speaking, you'll get to about 10 days in and you just feel like ass, and it's just like, you know what? Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a very unpleasant drug to take. There's just, AMP as well, AMP5. AMP5? Mm. That's, that's something else? I'm not familiar yeah. with that. Oh. If you, um, AMP is a veterinary drug used for racehorses. It's for vasculator. Well, hold on a sec, because I was going to add in that, so these are a few of the things Victoria mentioned as potential issues uh, with PGF2A, uh, endometriosis, inflammatory mm. bowel disease, bacterial infections, rheumatoid arthritis, 
systematic immune and uh, inflammatory system dysfunction. Yeah, I think that's probably particularly dose dependent. Uh, and the thing is, as with most of the bodybuilding dosing protocols I've seen, it's quite small doses, very okay. localized. Okay. Um, so, but yes, I could definitely relate to the immune type setup stuff. Hmm. Uh, there's a very harsh immune response going on with it. Um, it sounds rough. It's, it's not a pleasant drug to get on with. Now, I've never used it topically. I know a couple of people that have, and they were very impressed with it. Huh. Um, whether that still stands... I like I say I haven't spoke to the individual. The last person I know used it, I haven't spoke to them in quite a while. But he, he was definitely very lean on stage. Okay. Wow. Um, it generally comes in very large bottles because okay. it's marketed in the veterinary industry to stop make cows abort. Yeah. So um, and really, when you're dosing for side growth, you're microdosing it. You know, you're not using a slim pin and you're not using huge amounts. Mm. So, I mean, one of those big 100 or 150 mil balls is going to last you a very, very long time. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it's not a pleasant drug to get on with at all. Um, the only bone I, bonus I found out of it was the lovely sight swelling that came from using it. Yeah. Oh. Um, but uh, it, it wasn't pleasant at all. Um, and, you know, there's just some drugs that, you know, I don't actually care if they're really good at causing something. I can't put up with these sides long yeah. enough to actually deal with it. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I—that's the feeling I had just hearing about this stuff. We had a yeah. few listeners that talked about using it, and you've had your experiences. I just—it doesn't seem like it would be worth it to me. It, it, it's weird shit, and you've got to be very careful as well because you cannot get it near females. Oh yeah, yeah. It fucks them up. Well, listen, with Amp Five, let's hold on to that one. We could talk about that on the next episode. Uh, uh -huh. give us a give us a topic to uh to contend with we'll uh we'll get out of here i'll get back to hanging out with victoria here at her house and uh and i'll let you get on uh with your work dave so that's i'm said, gonna go i'm gonna go to the little boy's room and water my horse and then i'm gonna speak to scott all right well i hope you guys have a great conversation tell him that i said hi and, I will. Uh, I'll tell him that you hate him and you said he was a wanker and you really wish i was doing the show with him and not him <laughs> i appreciate that it's a pleasure all right, guys, for another episode of Drugs and Stuff with Dave Crossland, head on over to crosslands.org.uk. We've got that in the show notes. We've got timestamps in the show notes if you guys want to skip around our programming. I don't know if you knew that. If you guys are watching this at YouTube, you know, feel free to watch or listen to us over on uh, audio, advicesradio.com. Search Advices Radio on podcast apps. Guys, if you appreciate our stuff, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and, of course, click the notification bell so you can stay up to date with everything we have going on Dave Crossland, you have a question or a comment. What's the time stamp thingy? Time stamps? Yeah, if for an old bloke that doesn't understand internet stuff. So if you're on your computer and you scroll down mm. into the description, it'll be like, um, every, you know, Dave and Scott talk about PGF2A. And oh, and it's got the time in the video where it is. Yeah, you can click on that on, on your computer. It'll take you to that spot. Or if you're on your phone, you just have to scroll over because it doesn't have like a, a, an actual link. That's clever. Yes. It's for, it's for our modern day generation, including myself, that doesn't want to sit through an entire video if they want to learn about PGF2A. They just want to, boom, hit one button and be there. Yeah. That's, I, see, technology fascinates me. <laughs> it, 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 no, it generally does. It, it's the potential of it. It is phenomenal. Um, a friend of mine just bought a brand new um, BMW 850. Beautiful car, fully loaded with every conceivable extra you can think of. And he rang me last night and he says, uh, the car's driving me home. Holy shit. And I'm like, what do you mean? He says, honestly, mate, he says it's got lane control, it's got cruise control, it's adaptive, it brakes, it does everything. And if I want to change lanes, I just touch the indicator and it changes lanes for me. Hmm. So you can't stop and go around corners yet, yeah, but pretty much everything else he's fucking doing. He says, absolutely incredible. And I said, and how do you find it? He says, great. I said, have you got used to all the controls? So I don't need to. So what do you mean? He said, I just talk to it. That's insane. So what do you mean you just talk to it? He said, I just take me home. And it took me home. And 
I'm cold and it turns the heating up and he said it absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> well, on that note, guys, for another episode of Drugs and Stuff with Dave Crossland, this uh this segment's been brought to you by BMW. We'll see you soon. Send me a free one. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>